Next time your doctor asks that question, you should know how to answer it. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out. Hello and welcome back. Today is the first video in my stress video series that I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. I'll be going into what is stress? How does stress alter our body to cause illness? How is stress and anxiety related? And how to relieve stress so that you can improve your health and reduce your symptoms. If we haven't met yet, my name is Madison Dote and I educate young women on how to understand their bodies and heal naturally. If you wanna follow along with this series, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell beside that because I will post a new video every Sunday. In today's video, I'll be talking about what counts as stress how stress works in the body, and what is cortisol. Most people, when asked the question of whether they're stressed, don't really know how to answer. So sure, their life's not bad, but you're not really relaxed and you don't really know if that counts as stress or not. So let me explain to you a little bit more about stress and then next time your doctor asks that question, you should know how to answer it. An animal experiences stress when it is faced by its predator. And so this is the scientific concept known as fight or flight. Think of a deer and a lion has just approached the deer. The deer has the option to either stand there and fight the lion or the deer can run away. Now, just knowing that scenario, the deer probably wouldn't try and fight the lion, the deer would actually run away. So that's what's called flight is when you run away, even though the deer can't fly. And there is actually a third one called freeze and some animals use this and that is kind of where you play dead. Now one example of where they would probably stay and fight is if you had two animals of the same species and perhaps they were fighting over a female in order to mate and reproduce and pass on their genes. Uh, so in our everyday world, things that count as stress um, is anything that really overwhelms us. So we don't really need to worry about running away from lions anymore. Um, however, back in the day, that was very much what our stress was when we were cavemen and we were hunting for food um, and hunting for shelter and all those things. So these days, if we've got an electricity bill or if we've got an exam coming up, or even if we've got a lot of tasks on at work that we need to get done within a certain amount of time, we feel stress because we are worried that we won't achieve what we need to achieve. So perhaps with the exam, you won't achieve the mark that you need, or perhaps at work, you get stressed out and worried because you won't complete what you need to in the certain amount of time that you need to have it done by. Now, because we are still homo sapiens, it actually brings on the same response as if we were faced with a lion. So when running away from a lion, there are a couple of things that we need and a couple of things that we don't need our bodies to do. Now, one very obvious one that we don't need our bodies to do if we are trying to run away from a lion is stop and have lunch. So you can't just say to the lion, look, I don't really have enough energy to run away from you at the moment because I haven't really had my lunch yet. Do you mind if we just pause, I'll eat my lunch and then you can chase me. Um, doesn't work like that. So when we are in danger, our bodies do not think about food. They don't wanna eat um, because it's just a time waster and it's not going to help our survival when we are faced with a threat. So what happens is our digestive system turns off because it's not needed. Another thing that happens is that our heart rate increases and therefore pumps blood around our body faster. And this goes with the increased breathing because we breathe in oxygen and then the oxygen goes from our lungs into our bloodstream and then it moves around our blood to get the oxygen to the muscles because we need to run away. We would also need that oxygen in our muscles if we were wanting to fight. So, so far we've got our digestive system shuts down, our blood pumps faster, so our heart rate increases, and we start breathing faster as well. We also get a little bit of a heightened anxiety because 
Anxiety is the ability to think about all possible options super quickly and it just rattles through your brain. And so when we're running away from something that is trying to kill us, what you want to be doing is you want to be looking for all possible outs, um, all possible ways that you can save yourself and escape the danger. So as another example, say that someone is running towards you with a knife, uh, then you would need to think of all possible options. Maybe, I don't know why I'm thinking of this scenario because it's never happened to me, but if you're running down the street at nighttime, then you look to your right and there's an alley, but then there's a really high fence. So you need to think about whether you can actually jump that fence or whether you're capable of that. But then you look to your left and there's a house and you go, well, can I go up to the house? Will they let me in? What if the door doesn't open? So you're thinking about all possible options um, because you don't want to reach a dead end because then they catch you. Um, so it's an advantage in that case that your brain is going a million miles an hour. It's not really an advantage when you're stressed over things like what to do at work and your exam because it just gets you thinking and thinking and thinking and all up in your head. Your nervous system also gets on high alert, ready to make fast movements and split decisions. And your muscles actually tense up because they're getting ready to be used to either run away or fight. So when you think about it, when you're sitting at your desk, looking at your electricity bill and stressing out about money, you don't need your muscles to fight anyone or to run away but you still sit there and you get tense, which is why it's nice to have a massage when we are stressed to relieve that tension. Now, whenever you hear of stress, you may have also heard of cortisol. So cortisol is known as the stress hormone and it's actually a steroid hormone that is produced in the adrenal glands. Now, cortisol is responsible for telling your body that it's time to switch over to the sympathetic nervous system. So you have two, you have the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight. And then you have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is for your relaxation and your calming down and getting ready to sleep. So when cortisol is high, this is, like I said, when the sympathetic nervous system takes over and you go into fight or flight, even though you may not have to run away or fight anything, but you still experience those things that I was talking about before. So your digestive system stops working, your heart rate increases, your breathing increases, your muscles tense up and your nervous system gets on high alert. Now, cortisol is not all bad. Just like stress is not all bad, stress can be very important in motivating us and also making sure that we are productive and have enough energy to do the things that we wanna do. But it's when you have too much cortisol that it can cause you to be tense for too long or it can cause your heart rate to be too high and not allow you to rest. It can also stop your digestive system from working and therefore you store all your food because when you're running away from a lion, you don't know when you'll next get a chance to hunt. So that's another thing that your body does to try and increase your survival in that moment. Now, if you've ever seen a cortisol chart, you will know that cortisol actually fluctuates throughout the day for each and every one of us. And it is usually highest in the morning and it should be lowest at midnight because that is when you should be sleeping. Now, if you have irregular patterns and perhaps you're staying up late at night, then that can cause your cortisol to be higher than it needs to be. This is one of the reasons why they say sleep is super important if you are trying to lose weight and also if you suffer from depression or anxiety because it can really calm you down and bring you back down into that parasympathetic nervous system state rather than always staying on high alert and stressed. So what counts as stress? Well, it's really anything that puts you on that high alert and anything that causes you to worry. So if you're struggling with money, then it could be a bill or it could be how many hours you're getting at work if you're worried that you're not going to be able to provide. If you don't get hours, but you're fine and you're not gonna worry about money because you've got enough to get by, then you won't be as stressed as someone who is living week to week. Another one is often when you are studying, you've got lots of assignments, you've got lots of exams, you feel really overwhelmed 
and the result of you not doing well on those assignments or exams or not doing them at all or not getting them done by the deadline is that you fail and then you need to repeat and that causes a whole bunch of other problems in your life and puts things back in your timeline. So that is a perceived threat. Also, if you are around anything negative, any negative people, if you've got negative relationships in your life, then you can feel like perhaps you don't belong. If you are getting bullied and you think that that's going to affect how many friends that you have and therefore you think that you're going to lose social connection. Social connection is actually one of the things that we really need in our lives. Um, so if you're worried that you're not going to get that or if you're going to lose that, then you are in a state of stress. So now that you understand stress a little bit better, you understand what constitutes as stress and also what stress does to your body, the next video will be more on how stress actually causes illness. So stress is not a perception thing. We've discussed how cortisol, a hormone, can actually enter the bloodstream and travel all over the body and shut down some systems and increase other systems. So it's not a perception if you're just worrying and therefore it causes a cold, but stress actually plays a huge role in increasing cortisol levels and therefore causing all body systems to do weird and wacky things and make you sick and give you disease. So that's what we're going to cover on the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like it below, subscribe and share it with any of your friends that might be stressed. Also, if you want to jump down into the comments, you can let me know what's stressing you out at the moment. I also have a community on Instagram where we share super supportive tips and also really helpful information. So make sure that you go and check that one out. Hopefully next time you're stressed, you can think back to this video and really understand what's going on in your body. And perhaps it will even motivate you to do some breathing, some yoga and some meditation to bring yourself back down into that parasympathetic state. Thank you for watching and make sure to check back next Sunday for the next video. I can help you out. I can